Howdy, folks. It is the Creepy Kentuckian here. Hi, I'm Uncle Bill. How you doing, buddy? What's up? Garrett, you <laughs> How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you guys? Oh, I'm, I'm off the chain. Woo. Ready, ready to talk some Anchor Bay Entertainment. Now, we did a show with Sleepy last fall that was kind of about the history of the, the company and everything, but we never really did... An episode on some of our favorite uh, additions that they come out with. So we're definitely going to talk about that and maybe some some memories as well. Yeah. Uh, some of our favorite types. We've got Spur Gear, Joe Bob Tar Heel, X Ray Punch, <whistles> Stunt Man Mark. What's going on, dudes? What's up? Holla if you hear me. So how y'all doing this evening? I know me and Garrett briefly talked right before, um, but uh, Uncle Bill just popped in here. How you doing, Uncle Bill? Son, I'm killer. I've been going through all these DVDs, and I'm like, we got sent so much useless shit back in the day. Like, <laughs> I had not had no memory of half of the things that I had in there, and some of it's amazing. Like some of it, I just pulled out because it's so stupid. I had to. It doesn't even have anything to do with Anchor Bay, but like I found a lot of uh, a lot of Anchor Bay stuff that I had forgotten about too, did, which would be cool. Did you find uh, Dead and Breakfast in there? No, I think Steve got that one, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was. I was thinking. I was like, because we did send some people some stuff back in the day to review. So, um, Falls Rotten, what's going on, man? Uh, Scratch Burno. So we got yeah, we got a pretty decent amount of people in here. But, um, yeah, I mean, Anchor Bay, like, I think in a lot of ways, that was the company that that got me into collecting DVDs, really. Because back in that time frame, 99, 2000, 2001, they were like it. They come out with everything. Horror, yeah. you know, cult mm -hmm. film-wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I kind of feel the same way. It was it was really early into the game when you started getting a lot of these things, and then all of a sudden I started figuring out like, oh wait, these are all from the same company. Like, I wasn't really aware of you know companies and stuff back then. It was just kind of coincidental, and then all of a sudden I was like, all right, let me let me dig deeper into this, and that's when I kind of started to find out a little bit more about them. And uh, Foz is on who says I better see at least. 10 copies of Evil Dead. <laughs> you will. I guarantee it. <laughs> going to see at least one uh, for sure that we'll be talking about. The um, Yeah, that's the thing about Anchor Bay as well. When they found a title that sold, like Evil Dead, Halloween, 
uh, Creep Show. I think it's Creep Show Two is what they had back in the day. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if they had the original. I don't think so. But yeah, they would. You would see those every fall. You know, September, October, in your local Walmart, baby. They were everywhere, really, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so many of those that I can remember. Like the one that I specifically remember trying to find. And that everybody, I think, at that time period was trying to find was the Dawn of the Dead one. Like the original, just the DVD, I think it was put out in like 97. And it was the only one that was like out for years and years. And it went out of print. And then I found one. Do you remember Pied Piper that used to be in uh, yeah, Lexington? Hey. Mainly, or like, not? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Was it Pied Piper or was? No, it, you're thinking uh, of uh, Disc Jockey, maybe. Disc Jockey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I found one there, and they wanted like eighty or ninety bucks for it. So even back then, they were like, you know, they jacked the prices up. They knew it was you know, collectible or whatever. Uh, that was the, the main one I can remember though from that time period. They were probably the first company that I can think of for me that I actually knew the brand, and that the brand was like what you looked for rather than like the actual title. We definitely need to, you know, maybe give you guys a little bit of a history on anchor Bay though, because they were releasing stuff as, I think it was video treasures, right? That's what sleepy said. So this was back in the, back in the eighties. And then they changed, changed over to anchor Bay entertainment in the early, early to mid nineties, maybe. And primarily was releasing a lot of stuff on VHS early on, but they were one of the very early companies. I'm talking about 1997, I believe, releasing horror DVDs and cult movies and stuff on DVD. So way ahead of its time. I think the initial release of Dawn of the Dead was like either 97 or 98. So that, and that's the one that you're talking about there that was out of yeah. there for quite a while. Now they released Dawn of the Dead quite a few times. Um, you know, I've, I've sadly sold basically almost all of them. Um, and Dawn of the Dead is one of those type of movies that I feel like it always stays valuable, no matter what edition and stuff you had. What was the first edition? Was it that like purple and like yellow colored one? Like, what was the? Then they had the one with the multicolors of all the different, like the logos well, on it. It's funny you should ask. Okay, uh, all right, that's the one I thought. Yeah. That's the 1997 uh, version. That's the heavy hitter. That's the that's the original. That, this was before. Look at the special features on it. If you can see that, this is before they ever really <laughs> did anything. Like right, right. I mean, it's just it's basically a bare bones. The side one is the widescreen director's cut. Side two is a a director's cut, like with a different aspect ratio, and like that's it. There's no Special features, there's no anything else like that on it. It's just the director's cut of the movie. So a uh, funny thing is, um, I don't know if you guys watch um, or listen to... Uh, Zack Ryder does a podcast about action figures. I don't know if you guys ever listen to it, but I listen to it a lot. And um, they hype up like certain action figures, mostly wrestling. Like Right now, they're hyping up like the Bendoms. Like They're all about the Bendoms. And you remember those shitty freaking figures that they had back in the day? Well, it's almost like they have a thing on that show where when they hype something up, it all of a sudden it lights like a fire onto everybody's ass. And all of a sudden those things become super valuable because then everybody gets a nostalgia kick. Everybody's trying to buy them. And all of a sudden you look and they're like, oh, wow, Bendems are worth all this money now because the demand is all there. So what's kind of funny is that we're talking about this and with the VHS kind of boom again in a sense where it's like, oh, if you have this VHS, get it graded and now it's worth all this money where I feel like right now, man, like it's reminding me of like sports cards. Like we should get this hyped up and like let these things like, for instance, like right now looking at that, I'm like, oh shit. Like I wish I had the original Anchor Bay Dawn still. And you know, like to me, like if you think about like a baseball card and someone's rookie, you're always like, oh, I want that rookie card. Well, to me, that disc right there is like the rookie of, of Dawn of the Dead on DVD, right? So yeah, I mean, you know, we, if can, you... we can utilize this podcast and kind of create like a new hype for some of these like Anchor Bay original titles, man. Like, look at that. The, that thing is sweet. The, the weird thing about it is, is this is kind of like, I don't know how else to put this, but it's kind of like the, um, the inroad or what have you of like 
my kind of horror watching experience because I looked for this movie forever and I saw it when I was a kid. Like much, I was only 17 when this movie came out. Like this version came out. But I mean, I saw it when I was much younger and tried to find this version forever and finally did find it. But like, this is like one of the DVDs that really got me started. There's another one too that I don't know. I don't think, if, I don't know if Anchor Bay did it or if it was somebody else, but The Cat in the Brain. One that you got, CK, is another one where it's like, it just takes you down this rabbit hole of like wanting to watch more and more films of like the same kind of, same style, I guess. Right. Interesting thing too, like 1997, I mean, think of that. The DVDs came out March of that year. All DVDs. So, I mean, this was crazy early on. I think Anchor Bay 2, interesting thing that people never talk about, early on the first three or four years they were around, all of their DVDs had a VHS counterpart. Oh, yeah. Everything. So I was looking up stuff today. You can get the Madman release on VHS from Anchor Bay. Uh, Mart, George Romero's Martin is another one. So mm -hmm. they were releasing everything on both formats around that time. I've actually, I found this in the storage build, and this is how they did their VHS tapes. It's like a, it's, it's like a, a weird, shell, right? weird smaller clamshell. Yeah, this is one of the Guardian. Yeah. I remember those like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's this one was from 1999, I think, is when the, the studio came out with it. So this is yeah, it's kind of a weird collecting thing because for me, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that. You know, like that Dawn of the Dead DVD Uncle Bill had up there. The prices on that stuff, it's it's not collectible right now. Right. Now, some of this stuff is. The Martin one is 50, you know, 60 bucks. Just because it's mainly out of print. I mean, it's kind of hard to get. I think, the, I think there was a Lionsgate version of that that even goes for a good amount of money, but... You know, a lot of this stuff that was big and, and, and collectible for a long time is not really, the price on it has not really went up at all. So if anybody wanted to get into a collection um, of some killer horror movies at cheap prices, you could definitely get in on the some of the Anchor Bay stuff we're going to talk about. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, th I think, again, like, already I'm getting itchy just watching that him show that and... Um, What's funny is you talk about the the VHS and that just brought back a lot more memories. Like my VHSs are kind of packed away, but I do have an Anchor Bay Dawn of the Dead VHS, but it's not the one that he showed. It was one with like it was almost like rainbow colors. That was the director's like cut, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I have that on VHS still in one of those clamshells. I also have that Halloween one that came with that globe. You know, that big thing. And I totally forgot. Like, I would have brought that here, but I totally, like, didn't even think about that being Anchor Bay. But, um, yeah, I have that as well. And then it was, like, another one I had, like, the Jeffersons or something on VHS, which I don't even have that on DVD. So um, I'm not even sure what it is. But it, I remember being one of those, like, slim Anchor Bay clams or whatever. So it's funny that you bring those up. Now, I know I've told this story a couple times on a couple different play like, different kind of people's podcasts and things but there was a dude who lived around here in the probably like the late 90s early 2000s who was like a tape trader slash like seller and that's what he had like the majority of stuff that he had were like the vhs copies of anchor bay films from around that time period and i remember he had like totes of them I don't know where the hell he got this stuff or like what he, you know, was doing with it or he may have stole it off the back of a truck. I don't know. But like he had totes filled with VHS tapes like that. Like the zombie and the evil dead and like right. Dawn of the Dead and stuff like that. And he he would go over to his house and it was like twenty bucks or something like that. I don't even I don't even know if it was twenty bucks. It might have been less than that, but it was cheap. And you would buy that that's the only way I ever knew that that kind of stuff existed was this guy that just kind of lived in the neighborhood and sold shit out of a tote. But he was a huge horror fan, too. That horror critic is saying that the Halloween Globe set is going for like $300 right now, unfortunately, for me. <laughs> so, yeah, that I may be... Know. I mean, there may be some of these that are... Uh, you know, some of these limited editions and recalled sets we'll be talking about later on that um, are still going for decent money, for mm -hmm. sure. 
uh, but relatively cheap compared to what they were back in the day. Some of this stuff that was out of print for a while um, yep. was going for crazy money. And something else that I was thinking about as well earlier today, you got all these boutique labels now. Um, Vinegar Syndrome, Blue Underground, Synapse, Arrow Video. Maybe there's one or two stores out there. FYE is the only one I'm thinking of now that would carry some of their stuff. Some of these boutique stores as well, like Orbit DVD in Asheville, they have all that shit. But the interesting thing was for Anchor Bay, their stuff was in a ton of stores. Mm -hmm. And the limited editions were like 40,000 editions mm -hmm. of 40,000. It's not like today when they have a limited edition run of like 3,000 movies or right. something like that. So you would find this stuff in Best Buy stores, um, Disc Jockey, like you were saying. Walmart would carry all this stuff around the holiday, you know, the Halloween holidays. Suncoast Video which was a big store in the mall. <laughs> yep. I just forgot that that existed for a minute. Like that, that's yep. been gone for so long. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that led to a lot more of these movies being found by a guy like uncle Bill would deal with or in used stores, used movie stores. Cause I can remember in particular a trip that we went, uh, it's like, I think 2007 or so where we would hit up these used, movie stores and find all kinds of anchor Bay stuff used that was not even that i think i'd find i found uh, nightmares in one of those stores and hell night and movies like that so it's a lot different a lot of people you know the younger people right now may not realize this stuff was everywhere best buys uh, horror selection back 10 15 years ago was insane absolutely insane that that was really one of the most depressing things because i went to a best buy like maybe a month ago and i had been to that same best buy probably like six eight months before that and they had like on the other had like the first time i went well the first time i'd been there for a long time they had like two rows and it was that was their whole section of movies and then they had a couple of those little stand-up rows the next time I went back, which was like a month ago, they just had those two stand-up. They had taken the rows out, and they just had the two stand-up kind of towers. And that was their whole... I was like, is it gone? Do they, I mean, did they move it somewhere? But no, that's their whole movie, like physical media thing now. That's just yeah, it, it's fucking sad. crazy. Best Buy was like my go-to spot for, for a long time, around the time that we're talking about right now. Um, Best Buy, and then we had a place here, I'm not sure if you guys did, called Circuit City which was like the equivalent of Best Buy. So they were actually right across the street from each other. So I would hit up one and then go hit up the other. And that's how I would kind of haul a lot of this stuff. And like Wes said, especially around Halloween, like they would get boatloads. Like I can remember just they had whole sections just full of these things. And my uncle and I would go and just like grab them for like five bucks a piece, like during like a Halloween week or whatever. And um, we had another place, Newberry Comics, that I grabbed a lot of stuff because they did a lot of used as well. Um, and we had a place movie stop over here, which did a lot of used stuff. But like you guys said, the only place around here that does used anymore is FYE and like, that's it. And maybe like a Goodwill or a thrift store or something, but we don't have any movie places around here at all anymore. That would carry anything like this. I've been waiting to try this out. Hang on just a second. Give it, it, fucker. Give it. <laughs> How did I turn to Steve? <laughs> I morphed into Steve. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, Blow, we appreciate it, brother. He says Best Buy used to have all that uh, Misty Monday cinematic film shit. That's, now, that's hardcore. And I can remember Best Buy. Uncle Bill got the... What was it? The... Guinea Pig collection at Best Buy. You remember those? Japanese, yeah, like the Japanese gore movies. Yeah, that was that was like what, that's the thing that they sold all that stuff at Best Buy. Like even the hardcore, like that's about as hardcore as it gets. Really, even now, is that the Guinea Pig series of films? And I just bought it at Best Buy, and it was oh god, I kind of regret that now. I haven't sat through all those movies, but still. So 
since we're talking about that time frame, let me get my first one ready here because this was the one of the very first two DVDs I ever purchased. 20 about 21 years ago uncle bill and and garrett that's a long time okay <sighs> so this was at suncoast video these were like 30 bucks a piece and this opened the floodgates for the euro horror stuff and i was just obsessed with it for a long time i still kind of am but this is fulci's city of the living dead um so much about this movie influenced like a lot of the stuff in the show as well. I was looking at this today. This poster art was on our, on the back of our first t-shirt. And then, was it? No, this is a different poster here. But um, this was like the first... I had seen Zombie before, but I didn't really know who Lucio Fulci was. I think it was HorrorDVDs.com is the website I went on to look at some of the reviews and stuff. And I just got the DVD player the same day. So this is the one that I decided to pick up. And it's still probably one of my top two, three Fulci movies of all time, no doubt. Nice, man. That's that's great. Um, what What year did that come out? Do you know? As far as as it was released on DVD, was that like one of their earliest title, earlier titles, or it was? Uh, it may have been. Well, I it, it says two thousand, so it had to. Have, I got my first DVD player in two thousand, so I'm not sure it was probably brand new at the time, maybe. Um, but yeah, like, a lot of people may not realize Suncoast Video shit was expensive, so. The DVD, like, you could go and get this for, like, probably 4 or $5 now. But back in 2000, twenty nine ninety nine for yeah, for each of those movies that I got. Yeah, I remember that. Suncoast was always pretty expensive, but. Yeah, I think that's why Suncoast eventually went under the, like, quicker than any of them, really. Mm -hmm. I do remember that being the movie, though, that I watched that, like, was the one that got me into Italian horror films or uh, of any of them. I think that was the first one that we watched. Yep. Uh, I remember just some of the stuff that was in it. I mean, I don't know what the transfer of it looks like now, but you know, it still had a lot of the DVDs back then. It seems like it still had that kind of grindhouse, grimy top look to it. It was, it was good enough that it was in widescreen. You know, that was all people really cared about in mm -hmm. those days but uh some of those scenes you know like the girl puking her guts up and the drill to the head scene um it just instantly gets your attention you know you're like what the hell is this mm -hmm. you know and just the vibe of the movie too i mean the movie the the music the cinematography um fulci like this i think this this along with the beyond uh, is my it has to be my top two favorite Fulci movies. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Beyond was another one. I I don't have it here, so maybe you guys do, but um, that was another one that I feel like was pretty sought after for a while. Um, that Anchor Bay Beyond disc was something that I just remember was was harder to find for a while. Um, it was like anything else you got you had to be kind of quick with stuff because I felt like things kind of went out of print pretty easily. Kind of like those Dawn of the Deads and stuff. Yeah, there were certain titles that immediately went out of print, it seemed like. and But, you know, like Evil Dead, they have like 5,000 of them. So, right. I mean, they never went out of print, I don't think. Um, yeah, this is the thing, too, we need to mention. Tuesdays was the release day for Best Buy, mm -hmm. right? So, we didn't have a Best Buy near us, really. But it was always like I would keep a pen and paper mm -hmm. ready and write down some of these titles for the next time that we went up to Lexington or wherever. Um, but yeah, I'm sure if you lived in the big city, like that was the place to be every Tuesday because Anchor Bay was coming out with stuff like crazy uh, around yeah. this time period. I mean, I don't know if you want me to go next, but it's actually a pretty good segue to what I'm going to talk about here uh, with Best Buy. Is that cool, Bill? Yeah, yeah. All right. 
Um, so luckily for me, Best Buy was relatively close. Um, it was about 20 minute drive from my house and Tuesdays around that time, like I would have class or something that I'd get out early. Cause at that point I was in college and, um, you know, I'd work maybe at night, like at four o'clock or something like that. And I had a routine every Tuesday with my buddy Keith that he'd come over early in the morning or after class or whatever it may be. Um, we'd go to Best Buy, we'd go to Circuit City, we'd make our rounds because they were very close to each other. And then we'd go to like a deli or whatever and get like a sandwich. Like that was like our Tuesday routine for it felt like years um, throughout college and stuff like that. So we were always stocking up every Tuesday on this stuff. So like I said, early on into the DVD collecting game, like I was getting into more horror movies, especially ones that I had was not familiar with at the time. And um, going to Best Buy and seeing all the selections there, I can remember one day I was there and it was down to this movie and Fright Night 2 that were sitting on the shelf. And I said to myself, okay, I have Fright Night 1. Fright Night was the first DVD I ever bought. Um, and I said to myself, you know what? Fright Night 2 will be here next time <laughs> I come back. I'm going to get this one because it says it's limited edition. It said on there like, the scariest movie of all time. And I had never seen the movie up until now. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this one a shot because it just, it just drew me in. It was so different looking visually than anything I had seen up to that point. And I'm thinking that you guys might have this one here, but um, it is this Suspiria that this big box limited edition one where it's got the numbers on the back and it comes with like a soundtrack and all this crazy stuff. But this was my introduction to Suspiria, believe it or not, was this this disc here. Like, I never owned it on VHS, nothing like that. And I had a pretty big VHS collection, but I never had Suspiria. So this was, like, my introduction to it. And, you know, going to Best Buy and seeing this in the shelf and the way it was kind of promoted, there might have been, like, a sticker on it or something, like, scariest movie of all time. I remember looking at the back and seeing this here and being like, ooh, what is this? And, um, you know, that was kind of my introduction to Suspiria. And then that really opened my eyes to Anchor Bay because I had never seen a DVD that was like thick like this ever. So um, that was definitely like a great experience. And that's why I think that that one to me is super important. I may have had Anchor Bay DVDs before this one, but that's the first one that I really recall uh, remembering and then really focusing on that little that little boat there on the side of the label. Yeah, X-Ray Punch says that Suspiria box is one of the best DVD packages ever put together. I actually kind of agree with that, too. That packaging and that particular release and the fact that they included the soundtrack, because it's one of the best soundtracks, too, of any horror film. Uh, it just made that whole thing amazing. Yeah, yeah I did. like I said, to me, like this movie I wasn't aware of for whatever reason. I don't know why. My uncle never showed it to me. He's the one who kind of introduced me a lot. So unless it's not really one of his go-tos, um, it really introduced me to it. And I probably wouldn't have been so apt to pick it up if I didn't see it in this really cool collector's type of edition. So that's really what threw me to it. And, you know, looking back, I do have Fright Night 2, but at the time, that was the last <laughs> I ever saw of it. So, <laughs> Dude, Fright Night 2... <laughs> Fright Night 2 is one of those discs that's like legendary at this point. Right. People, you know, mortgaging their fucking house to buy it. <laughs> I remember the version of Suspiria that I got was the standard edition, right? Because at the time I was going to going to like night school. I've told this story before, but fuck it. We'll do it again. There was this website called freeride.com. I didn't have a job or anything. And it was like a pay, it was a click. You click a bunch of ads and you get paid. So I would average out a $25 gift card from Amazon pretty much every week, maybe every other week. And I took a chance on a lot of movies using the gift cards back then, and Suspiria was one of those. I remember that one was under $25. I think the Suspiria limited edition was like 30 or 35 or something like that. It was a little bit more expensive. So, But... um. Yeah, the Suspiria edition, I think that was one of many limited editions that were when that fat DVD case. Mm. They they did a few like that, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. That's the one that's most memorable to me, though. I don't know why, but I just remember that packaging. I remember everything about it. I don't think I own that. I think I just got the regular uh, like standard edition like you do. I don't, I'm not sure if that went out of print quickly or not. I but, own it now. 
because I bought it after the Blu-ray came out. You can get it now for nothing, pretty much, and it's it's crazy. But yeah, I, that was one that I always wanted. So I, later on, I would oh, oh no, look who's in the chat. Oh fuck, oh. Tony Moran. <laughs> no, Steve will not <laughs> let you on that. <laughs> Steve doesn't like having guests on Captain's Quarters. He likes to do that all oh, himself. No, is, it, is he going to tell us the spear is a piece of shit now? I don't know if I can that. <laughs> Damn Italian <laughs> piece of shit. He's going to talk about chips <laughs> and how he got fucked on that. <laughs> Scott Bayo, fuck you. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so let's see. I'll do mine now. So this one is possibly the first, um, possibly the first Anchor Bay film that I actually bought. The Dawn of the Dead one, I don't think I got that one until much, much later than it actually came out. Uh, because I know I looked for it forever but didn't find it. But this one, I think, is the first Anchor Bay DVD that I ever bought. And I'm pretty positive that I bought this at Best Buy as I bought like pretty much everything at that time from Best Buy. And... At this point, they've got 15,000 different versions of this movie out. But this is the 2002, 2003 version. No, no, you got to pick. There was a 2002 and a 2003 version. I think this is the 2000, trying to read it on here, 2002 version. And this is, they actually had some... uh, some special features. They got behind the scenes footage, a theatrical trailer, and talent bios along with an audio commentary with the director. But that was it. This is the ones that had like THX. Yeah. You know, they sound did on that the bottom. For a while. They did the they did like the THX editions or whatever, remember? Or the D, I mean, D, D Yeah. The, what was the other one there? Seriously the like editions or whatever. The the Evil Dead, the history of Evil Dead, just the first movie. Yeah, on DVD and Blu-ray would take three hours for just <laughs> probably the anchor base it of. I mean, you you got to think like who knew when this came out that there'd be five hundred different versions of this movie, including yeah. like shit in you know the Necronomicon books, which you know I'm sure we've got some of those to show, and like the tens and all that shit that they did. Like they put out, I don't know how many. I'd like to know like an official count. Of how many different versions of Evil Dead One and Two that Anchor Bay has out, but you know, this I is the the first one that I can remember. They had like one set that I don't know if it was before that one or after that one. That was like in uh, almost like jewel cases, like the tall jewel cases, like a CD, and they had different. It they didn't have a cover on it. it had different artwork on the disc. Do you remember those? Like four different. There was like four different ones. Um, well, I didn't bring it here because, um, it, I thought it came a little bit later, but I had this one, uh, I got rid of all my evil deads when I got this one from Anchor Bay. It was like a blue book almost. It was blue and it was thick and you open it and it's got like, I don't know. I don't even know what's in there, but it's like, I just know it's blue. I had that one. I remember the one you're talking about. Yeah. It's like a media book that opens in the middle. Like, Yeah. yeah. And it's like the ultimate edition or something like that. And I don't know exactly what's on that that's not on anything else, but that's the version that I still have. But it's got that different Anchor Bay boat on the side. So that's why I, I assumed it was coming later in like after this little run. But um, does anybody know now that looking at that one, speaking of all the Evil Deads, because I had gotten rid of everything I have except for that blue ultimate edition. What's the Evil Dead Anchor Bay rookie? What's that? What's that one look like? I forget. That's what I was saying. I have no clue because they released so many of them. Maybe somebody here can tell us. Was it the the multi-release one where they released like three or four different versions of it? And Chris V's asking if the Evil Dead releases back in the day used the same print. I would almost guarantee they did. Um, People back then really didn't seem to care that much about that sort of thing. I don't know what you guys recall about that, but I I never remember anybody really bitching about the picture quality or being picky no like that. because i think from vhs to that like there was so much of a difference that i or that we it's either there was so much of a difference that we were always like, excited there was a small difference we were always excited and there was no difference but we had on a new format so therefore we didn't know any better so 
I don't think that that kind of stuff really was anything that anybody was talking about except for, you know, building a collection on something better looking than the VHS was, in my opinion. We had a question about tins, and I might as well go on to my next one because it does have a tin, and I'm going to be talking about that as well from uh, Taylor up here. <clears throat> so I mentioned Free Ride, uh, that website where I'd click on shit and get a gift card or whatever. And this was one of those movies that I randomly bought. I had no clue what it was. Um, it looked cool. I loved the name of it. And I knew that Anchor Bay, at this point in time, I, I knew that Anchor Bay was a company that I was interested in their titles. And this movie's been re-released numerous times since then, but has never been released under this title. So I don't know what the story is with that. Um but I absolutely love the artwork and pretty much everything about this movie. And uh, it's from, what year was this? Like early 70s, 74. Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Right? Yeah. So this is a killer fucking zombie movie. If you're a fan mm -hmm. of zombie films, especially Romero style ones, you'll definitely want to check that movie out. But I remember being, I was kind of freaked out by this movie. I mean, it's its kind of hard to make a zombie movie really scary, at least to me. Because mainly they're, zombie movies are goofy and fun and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. this movie did. I mean, it, it I think it was mainly shot in like the English country area. I don't know. It's been a little while since I've seen it. But later on, I didn't have this back in the day, but I always wanted it. I think I picked it up from our good uh, pot smoking buddy hydroponic back in the day when he was selling all his <laughs> shit it is the the tin which for a long time was going for crazy money it's still sealed by the way mm -hmm. um, that's crazy though and includes uh i think it includes a toe tag and some other cool gimmick stuff it's uh this was limited to five thousand get it graded um, bro sure maybe someday <laughs> The cellophane may not be in perfect condition, but uh, you guys, <laughs> you guys, he's got, he's got it on any, a plaque in the back, graded "Let Sleeping Corpses Lie" tin. <laughs> have any memories about "Let Sleeping Corpses Lie"? It's also known as "Living Dead" at Manchester Morgue. A lot of companies have released it since then, but uh, this is the only time it came out is "Let Sleeping Corpses Lie." Yeah, I I loved it um, when I got it. I don't have the tin; I just have the standard uh, Anchor Bay. And uh, I always loved it. And to be honest, I didn't realize it was called uh, Manchester Morgue or whatever. And then when Blue Wrong Underground came out with that edition, I was like, oh, cool, new zombie movie. And I bought it. I was like, wait a minute. I <laughs> 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 so uh, I ended up buying like that edition too. And um, I just recently got the, the Synapse did, right? It was Synapse. Yeah, they did the steel. Synapse, yeah. Yeah, was it 4K or was it 4K? I don't remember. I have it. I bought it from... Uh, Diabolic. It had some kind of like a limited edition slip on it, but no, it's a really cool movie. It's got a great tone to it. Like you said, it's it's different seeing zombies like out in the daytime, like out in like that countryside or whatever. It's it's got a very cool tone. Yeah, I just recently bought that. Uh, I didn't have it. I don't know why. Like it was the, one of the only uh, steel books that they put out that I didn't have. Synapse. I mean, and recently bought it. I remember just watching it, and the atmosphere of that movie is just so bizarre. Just getting caught up in, because it, it's not like anything else. It's not really like any of Fulci's movies. It's not really like any of Romero's movies. It's got its own world, the way that it's created. And it's just such a great movie. It's atmospheric and bizarre. And and the zombies don't look like any other types of zombies that you've seen. And mm -hmm. I wish there were more films that came out like that, actually. But I remember the 10. I don't have that 10. That's like one of the only ones that I don't have, too. Yeah, the, the time frame, too, like I said, 74. So it may very well be the first color zombie movie from, hmm. I mean, it's just six years after Night of the Living Dead. So, you know, of that, I mean, there may be other, you know, voodoo-type zombie movies. I'm talking about Romero-style uh, zombie films. So, but yeah, that's a that movie's a high recommendation for me. Uh, I do need Same. to pick up the Synapse. Uh, version of that but I, i'm almost thinking that he may do a 4k of that at some point um so i may want to hold off but time will tell all right so i might as well just ride on your uh 
your tail with that uh, with the tin because I have a tin right here as well, and uh, that is Evil Dead Two, and I got mine signed by Bruce Campbell himself. Stay groovy. Stay groovy. <laughs> um, yeah, the, these tins, man, were another thing that Anchor Bay was doing back in the day that was just so mind blowing. Like to get additions these movies in these crazy tins was, was unreal. It was just, again, it was something you had never seen before. And between the Suspiria with the thick boxes, with the sick, thick cases, this thing, it's like, I was just like the love for collecting at that point was just going crazy because it just, these things seem so special where now we almost kind of take these kind of things for granted, I think a little bit, but back then it was just so different. And honestly, like we get cool additions and stuff now, but nothing like this. Like, this. what is this? Like, what did they say? Hey, we're going to put this in, like, a big tin, right? Like, it's it's a cool Sturgy. display piece, no you put doubt. Your weight, like, you put your weight in it after you're <laughs> not watching I the mean, movie. You see this on the shelf, like, whoa, my movie's going to be in a tin, and it's got Love all the it. special features and stuff. Like, the display is huge, but you can't put this in any shelf. Like, no. it has to stay displayed, and, like, mine's displayed in, like, my library over there. But, um it's so odd because to me I was so drawn to it, but in reality you bring it home and you're like, what the frick am I going to do with this thing? You right. Know? What I was thinking, I remember when I first got the first 10 or two that I, that I purchased, I was thinking, okay, you're going to open it up and it's going right, to be the no, DVD case, but it's not. No, <laughs> no, no, they didn't so, do that. No, no. Well, you know, what's funny. I just opened it up to kind of, to, to show that what it, what it looks like, dude, I haven't opened this in so long. We're going to, I've got one. I'm going to open it right now, too, just to see what the hell's in it. Oh, you got the picture. <laughs> oh, I, didn't even realize I, ha I didn't even realize I had this. Like, I looked Dude, in, it's a picture of him signing it. Right that there. looks like one of those pictures, too, that you would print it out back in the day. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah like like, on a computer? It almost looks like it's laminated or something. But <laughs> I guess I guess maybe in my head I was like, well, maybe I'll sell this someday. <laughs> That's so but, awesome. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even realize I had that there. It's like a fucking time capsule you did in middle school. You put oh your picture God, and stuff in. Really? It's in the team. It really does look like that. Look at that. Oh, It'd be man. awesome if you, you had a bag of weed in there. Oh, I can't show that. <laughs> oh, no, but it, it comes in these stupid CD cases. Yep. Um, it's very, very odd. I, mean, I can't even get it out of here. Yeah, the, Very odd. It's like a burnt DVD. It's like what you would well, put a burnt DVD in. What's even funnier is look at the bottom of this thing. It's like plastic. It is like, like a lot of plastic. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nothing goes, there's nothing that goes in there. It's not like there's a, unless I'm missing a piece. There was no, nothing in I there. I think it's just how it's designed. <laughs> I got nothing in here. Let me check your Anchor Bay tins. You know, but, I don't um, know. Yeah, man. Um, I, I love those things. And I don't know if you guys have more of them ready to show because I have a couple over here, but. Um, yeah, actually, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie and The Beyond, I think, are the only two that I don't have um, of these tins. You can't forget, too, by the way, that uh, in fall 2000, Evil Dead, Hell to the King's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking I'm video game. One. Yeah, I'm looking at mine at the same time. Yeah. Oh, all right. Because I hadn't opened this thing in forever. Like, I just wanted to see what the hell was in it. I agree. So this was like fifty thousand of these. Um, I just let that big number. let that sink in for a second. Fifty thousand. Thousand. Yeah. And that was considered limited. Think about that, right? Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. I mean, fifty thousand would be like the largest run of any physical media they did. The right. thing though, I mean, they had so many places to sell these. Though. That's the thing. Like, I wonder. Where did all these people go that were buying this stuff? Are they just streaming stuff primarily now, or did they well, get out of movies? Another or? funny thing that we should bring up, because again, um, you know, talking to people in the horror community lately, I told you guys, like, it, it kind of makes me feel old sometimes in a way. Um, you know, I, I feel young, but when I talk to people that are really deep, deep into, the, into the horror game, I realize how young, because... Like eBay was around, deep discount had kind of just started for me. Um, I I don't know if Amazon wasn't a thing at that point, but like all this stuff that we're showing here, like we got at stores. Like we had to literally like not only go to the stores and find them, but these stores were carrying these. Like what store would carry this tin 
of like let sleeping corpses lie or the beyond <laughs> tamed like that like there's That's none true. so the fact that all this stuff i'm going to show you right now i think besides one thing um i got at a, at a store locally which is even crazier to think about because now you're a click a button away like there's no stores really that carry this kind of stuff yeah i mean it's it's ridiculous a lot of people um you know if you're even 10 years younger than us would really have no idea at how readily accessible some of this shit was. I mean, like you were saying, you could get all, just walk into a store, much like today you can go in and buy a freaking Disney movie or something at Walmart. Mm -hmm. But back then, <laughs> I mean, it was these, these giallo movies, these Italian gore movies, the, right. you know, the, I mean, just pretty much anything that you could think of, hardcore stuff. Like, uh, I think Unearthed Films had stuff at Best Buy back in the day. I mean, they, they could have. And like like Uncle Bill was saying, as you walk into a Best Buy now and it's so bare. But be, back then, like, let's say in like 2000, um, 2001, I think that's like when those tins came out was like 2001 maybe. I mean, I was... I was still really like I was in college at the time, like I was just fresh out of high school and walking into a store when DVDs were like kind of newer on the scene and just seeing Best Buy to me, like trying to think back at that time, like when I found that Suspiria and that Fright Night, like it almost seemed like another world because there was just aisles and aisles of movies and, you know, it took you a while to go through everything and trying to figure out, hey, what do I know? What don't I know? What should I try? And you know, now to see kind of what, what it's come to, it's actually, it's it's sad. Like, it really is. Yeah, I mean, the best part about that whole time period for me was actually you had to go somewhere and hunt these films out. And it was, that was like the coolest part. Like somebody on here said, like the thrill of the hunt to find something that like somebody else wouldn't have or to find something that you've been looking for for a long time. Find something you've never seen, but you wanted to see from the same director, like a Fulci or something like that. Yeah, that's just gone now, man. That sucks, too, to think about. Like, the, the like closest, That really doesn't exist. The closest thing, that, that horror critic just mentioned it, FYE is the closest thing that you have right now. You can go into FYE store, see Screen Factory stuff, Blue Underground mm -hmm. stuff, um, Arrow Video stuff. So, And that's at a much smaller scale. You know, they only have, they do have a horror section. I'll give them that. Yeah, and but like I said, they do have, they, they do have used stuff too, used horror as well. Yeah, and I don't know how much longer FYE is going to be around either. I don't so. think very much. I mean, it's it's basically the same store. That's the cool part about it, as it was like fifteen years ago. But you know, that how long? How much longer can that really go on? I love the fact that it's the same store. They still got the same setup. The fucking horror DVDs and Blu-rays are in the same spot that they were yep. when I was going there. Yep. Like it really hasn't changed that much at all. Now no, here's man. a question for you guys, and maybe you're you're better than me at this, and I don't know if it has to do with like just what we're used to now with um, being able to buy something at a click of a button. I don't know if it's just my life is just always like fast paced all the time, but when I go into a store, like even like a uh, a thrift store, and I see a wall of DVDs, like say there's like 300 there. Or I go to FYE and I see like the horror section that's just like so deep that I'm like, man, I could go through all this, but it's going to take me like 20 minutes. And I have trouble like focusing and, and looking around anymore. Like I'm just like I look quick and I'm like, all right, if I don't see it, I'm out. Where back in the day, I don't know if it's just because I had more time, but man, I can remember being in a store for like an hour going through like each movie, looking at the back, putting it back and going through each one. Like now I can't focus i'm like in and out and i'm like I, I can't go through all this stuff you know and maybe it's because at this point i feel like i have more or less everything i need where back then it was i was building i, I don't know what it is yeah but I, I don't I know think, how you guys feel about that I, I do the same thing i don't know if it's just like late onset add or what but like <laughs> i think honestly i think it's because like the majority of stuff that's out now is just like retreads of stuff that's already been put out so it's not like like back when i was that time period you're talking about where we were all looking for stuff, you know, to me, it was much more important that you found it. Like it was almost like a mission or something. And now it's just like something extra, like, okay. Like if you don't find the 4k or the Blu-ray of something, you've already got like four different versions of who gives a shit. But back then, like that was the only version of those movies. And well, you know, I, if it, I think a lot of the thing too is the internet now. So back then, especially, you know, 
even earlier than that, when you were going into a video store to pick out something to rent or whatever, there was so much that you didn't know about, right? So now you're looking up all these movies whenever Arrow has a big sale or Kino has a sale, you're coming across these films. And very rarely now would you ever come across anything in a store that you didn't know about to begin with or already out. Yeah, that's true too. I think it's more or less for me, it's like if I'm in a place that's got used. Like for instance, I'm going to give you, uh, today I went to a thrift store right near my house. There's one really close to my house and they have a, a wall of DVDs and I've passed by that wall like hundreds of times. But recently, you know, I've kind of looked around because I knew we were going to be doing this show and then it, like I said, it kind of got me itchy. So I'm like looking around trying to see if I can see anything cool. And, I did the um, same like thing. You guys. Did you really? <laughs> I did. Um, and like I showed you guys the other day, I randomly came across Halloween 4 and 5, Anchor Bay, the original Halloween 4 and 5. I have the tins. They're right here. Um, but these were like the rig the regular discs. And I didn't own them. I only had the, the, the tins and I only had like a two-pack, like an Anchor Bay like 4 and 5 two-pack or whatever. So I bought them dirt cheap. And, you know, I today I went back to be like, oh, maybe there was more horror in here. So... I don't know if you guys are like me, but I just look for that little boat to see like if I can find any wow. like Anchor Bay stuff. Well, this thrift store puts the damn price tags at the bottom of their thing, so you can't see the bottom of the like their price tags like go like on the bottom. So I'm sitting there and I have to go through each one to look at the title, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I gotta go, you know. But um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Like you said, I think it's <laughs> delayed onset ADD is probably a good word for it. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> But I want to piggyback off of uh, Evil Dead 2 because this that I'm getting ready to show is my probably my favorite version of anything Anchor Bay ever did and probably one of my favorite versions of anything physical media related. Some people probably think this is stupid and then some people will probably remember this, like why it was so killer. But I got this in 2005 from Tom Sullivan who was selling them at a convention. The first convention I ever went to was Horrifying in 2004. The second one I ever went to was that Full Moon horror and tattoo shit in nashville do you remember that um full moon tattoo and horror shit yep. yeah yeah they, they still they still have that show still going on i think yeah and sullivan was there and he had like the coolest shit like um and i think he has this pretty much everywhere he goes but he's got like a room or he had a room that was like all kinds of memorabilia of his from the evil dead movies and he would either sign your thing for free if that tells you anything about how long ago that was or he could draw something on it, and he would charge you like it was either five or ten bucks if he drew like an actual dead eye or something like that on your thing. And anyway, he was selling these at the time, and like this is one of my favorite uh, editions. This is the Evil Dead Two version. Does they it made still it. scream. I don't think so. Like I don't. I can't find a. I tried to find the spot it's where the, it was, I think it's the, I think it's the eye eyeball. There. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the biggest eyeball. No, it doesn't it's scream. Like, ah! <laughs> yeah, mine doesn't yeah. scream either. Mine doesn't but, either. But man, like the yeah. the artwork and stuff in these was like it's amazing. Legit, man. It's legit. Yeah. Yeah. That they didn't mess that's, around. That's the, that's the thing. Like they would do. And then the movie cool, was just like you know cool ass yeah. shit like that. Like not yeah. your standard. You know, oh, we're gonna put it in a you know put a fucking action figure with it or a poster or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. No. I mean, it probably cost them quite a bit of money to make those. Speaking of which, I actually had this on my list too. This is the first one. Yeah, we'll go nice through that. Got a package, yeah. Too. Yeah, it's still. Mine are. Um, I've got them. I've got one right here behind me on the display, and then I've got the other one on this side on the display right behind me there. Um, but you know what? I don't know if you guys um, follow those, but man, those are getting a little bit on the valuable side because. Um, for they're instance, dry, if you, they're drying up, dude, like luckily, and I don't know why, but mine are fine. Um, but like Piz, like had to, he went on eBay and rebought one because his had, had dried up and like the foam was pouring out. And then I was at my uncle's last night and his is same thing. Like it, it cracked and the foam's in there. And if you go online, like there's very minimal <laughs> that are still in good shape. Mine's um, still good, there, so. but I do not handle it at all usually it's the first time i've had it out yeah i don't what is it made out of man because whatever it is 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 it's it like foam latex or something yeah it's foam latex, latex it's like i mean the 
the cover part is latex. You can smell it. it smells like a mask. But inside, it's like foam, like a like a styrofoam or something like that. Like um, yeah, it has some I sort of padding I'm, in it or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know why mine are still good because I don't know if they're displayed like this and not up like they're not in a DVD shelf up against two. I I don't know, but um, yeah, like a a lot of people's stuffs are are wrecked. So I'm glad that you guys uh have yours in good condition. So I have a uh, I don't. It's up in the top of that shelf up there. It's um. Army of Darkness, Book of the Dead, which I someone has told me is worth a shitload of money. I but, can remember when that came out. Was that like a Canada or a UK title or something? Was it, it was Anchor Bay too? Or no? I think it was Australian. I'm not sure if it was. I don't think it was Anchor Bay, no. But um, that one is drying out a little bit. But my Anchor Bay ones are good. Yeah, it's weird though because I never even would have thought of that. But you're right. Like like anything like like masks. When you buy masks, if you don't display them correctly, like, and they're, like, in a room with too much humidity and stuff, like, they'll fucking start to harden because the stuff is just, you know, it's the kind of material that they're made out of. And so with this, I imagine. This is a good one right here. That horror critic said, I remember my brother had the original Book of the Dead, and my mom cleaned out our room and thought he was a Satanist. <laughs> But again, it's clever on their part. Like, we haven't seen anything like that again. Like, you know what? Some of these companies, too, like, um, just the way the world is now, if someone released um, Evil Dead 2 in, like, an updated book where they pay homage to that version of of that disc, or even, like, imagine a company put out, like, a, a new version of, like, this Evil Dead 2 tin. Like, I think that would, just for nostalgia reasons, I think people would kind of buy into that. Like, oh, that reminds me of the old tin that Anchor Bay did. Like, I One think that's, that like, a selling point. I could yeah. never figure this out, unless it's somewhere overseas that they've released this. Why would you not do a steel book of the dead? Who? Why, that's not that fucking difficult to do. <laughs> and just the marketing behind it? The Steel Book of the Dead? Come on. Still haven't yeah. gotten it, though. That is one thing about Anchor Bay, though. Like, their marketing department and the, and the way that they designed a lot of these things was second to none. Like, people still try to do stuff like that, but mostly it, it kind of pales in comparison to me to the way that they did these. Like, the Books of the Dead and the, the Tens and the a lot of the stuff, just the, the design of the DVDs was amazing. Yeah, it's so, like you look nowadays and everybody's fighting over like who has a better slip cover. Like that's like the what the, yeah. the main point of what's going on now where imagine back then being like a blue underground or somebody else that was uh, a dark sky or somebody and all of a sudden seeing Anchor Bay putting out like these tins and thick things and these and all this and being like what the hell like we can't even keep up with this. Like it was just so it was just so abnormal at the time that it was probably like driving the other companies nuts because it was just so out of out of the box and they, they just kept hammering this stuff out which is super cool it's probably one of those deals too where anchor bay was selling so many of these and we're putting out so many in all these stores suncoast best buy walmart whatever that they could afford to commission or however they did it some sort of outside group to make these fucking one of a kind i mean where would you go to even find somebody that can make that shit yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, uh, the other day I was on eBay and I saw like twenty. They had like twenty slip covers from uh, just the slip covers from Screen Factory. It went for like three hundred dollars. I was like, God damn, bulls! Like, <laughs> is this where we've gotten now? Like, people are paying three hundred dollars for slip covers. It's you know, nuts, honestly, man. Um, it, I was I thought about this a little bit too. Because, you know, the home media market has just went fucking crazy. Like, with all these 4Ks and Blu-ray titles and all that. Do you think that there's people out there that never adopted the Blu-ray and just continued collecting all of their old horror movies and stuff on DVD? Probably. Sure. Yeah. Like, I'm positive that there's people out there that probably only collect VHS and probably only watch VHS. Mm -hmm. I mean, for just the, the way that it looks, like the grainy kind of quality to it. I know a lot of people that hate like watching things like Texas Chainsaw and Hills Have Eyes on DVD or Blu-ray because that just kills the experience for them. 
I would love, and I mentioned it to Don May when we had him on the show um, a few weeks ago. I would love, like, whenever they do, I'm sure somebody will finally, you know, they will do a 4K here in the United States for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I would love to see a 4K edition of just a grimy print of Texas Chainsaw Massacre as well as, like, a contrast. So I'm in the mood for something like a, gr a grindhouse horror night or whatever, you know. Be very cool. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you know what time it Here is, we go. Uh, I got to turn to Steve again. Here we go. <laughs> Give it to it, fucker. I don't know why it gets me every time. He says, Movie stop. Uh, Where are you from, dude? Where did they have those everywhere? I'm in the Northeast, so we had a lot of movie stops. That was my, uh, that place was my jam. That was such a good store. I was on like a list for them where they would call me and be like, "Hey, your monthly Scream Factory orders here." And I would get everything discounted because I like did that some kind of program, and that's how I ended up getting all those those movies early. Um, yeah, but I don't I know. Did you guys have Movie Stop? Didn't no, have Movie Stop. No, uh, it was killer, dude. It was like GameStop, but it was movies. It was the same company. It was killer. We had, well, buddy, we had Superstar Video. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have that. yeah, Superstar Video and uh, Food City and <laughs> yeah. You know. The um, but as far as deals, that's what he's asking about. He said, "I found Dawn of the Dead, Anchor Bay." Blu-ray for five ninety nine at Movie Stop. Any examples of steals like that? Yeah, I got uh, one. I don't know if it's worth anything now, but at one time it was. And you can see right here how much I paid for it at the time I got it. Oh, oh, a dollar. Penny. <laughs> wow. You know how much that is now? <laughs> that's it's quite weird. a bit. That is one that's still worth quite a bit of money. Yeah, it was literally on clearance for a fucking dollar. But that's yeah. Great movie, man. Great movie. That is that's the one movie. I think. That would be one that I would love to do like a fan commentary over, but nobody has that movie hardly. I mean, I I don't know if you can can you watch it online? Is it anywhere online to watch? I don't know, but um I don't think so. That's I can one of those movies that uh it's it's coming, guys. It's coming. I know it is. Something. Yeah, Kenny Company does a great movie. It, I can't wait for that one to come out on a the transfer on that is is kind of rough. I rewatched it last year, um, but, yeah, it, but it it could use an upgrade for sure. And then we're all gonna be mad that we didn't part ways with ours early. But um, it's hard. My uncle is very. Uh, he he seems to think that DVDs are going to skyrocket in the next like ten years, the same way like VHS did and all this stuff. And he also seems to think that. He, he's like, don't get rid of your DVDs. He's like, watch. He's like, this Blu-ray shit and all this other stuff. And he collects Blu-rays and stuff. But he's like, I know people that are dealing with disc rot and all this stuff. And, you know, this is all stuff that's kind of far above my head where he's saying that the, these movies are all rotting now. And he's like, DVDs are going to be the best way to watch it, you know, for the long term or whatever. But um, that's his prediction is he thinks DVDs are going to be the main way to uh, to – for people that really want to collect to kind of keep their stuff for a long period of time. Yeah, that's we'll what, see. Don Coscarelli, though, he's mentioned about Kenny and company here, the horror man. Uh, we talked about this. He re recently did post a nice looking screenshot of Kenny and the company. And Garrett was on Pizal's uh, chat with Coscarelli, which he claimed that he didn't know anything about it, uh, but that Disney owned it, right? So Yeah, that's what he, he said. Disney owned it. They were planning on doing something with it, and then they acquired like Marvel and Fox and all that around that time. And he said it's it's hit the back burner, and he doesn't know uh, he doesn't know what the heck's going to go on with it. So um, he's like, I'm trying to get it back. So that was I don't know, maybe nine months ago, six months ago. And then he recently posted a another shot or whatever. So I don't know, maybe he got it back. Who knows? That's the thing, though, man. It'd be hard as hell to get something back from Disney. I would imagine. Like, right. <laughs> no, <laughs> Go give it back to you. something like that, though, that they're they probably have no interest in something like no. that. So it might not be yeah, as difficult as you think. I mean, I kind of feel like with everything else they got going on, they're not going to do Kenny and company anytime in the near future. <laughs> so um, who's up next? Is it Garrett or I think it's you, man. It's me. Oh, no. Okay. You, wait, you just did the you just did the Book of the Dead, right? Yeah. Book of the Dead was mine. Oh, no, it was his. And then you grabbed yours. 
Right, I had Book of the Dead. That was one of mine anyway, uh, so you can go. It don't matter. <laughs> All right, so uh, here's another good, uh, another one that um, was big for me at the time that was um, kind of sought after for a little bit, but it was one that I just thought was another unique thing that they did. Um, and this is that Halloween, that like director's cut. It was like the television cut or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm getting a glare here. But um, yeah, to me, this was a real cool addition because... You know, growing up, I actually saw Halloween on TV before I saw it any other way. So um, this was really big for me to have this and to have both versions at the time was was really cool. And I know that they did do that thicker case one that did come with both editions, but I'm not sure what came first, that or this. I have both, but this is the one I remember going to the store and just being like, wow, that they had this on a single release. And um, yeah, so that Halloween television cut. This was I had this as a backup. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. This one was the, I had Halloween. Nineteen ninety nine is when this one came out. So I do recall um, that because this that was one came out in two thousand and one. So yeah, that must they, they must have released this for anybody who maybe didn't get that one. Um, I got this first, and I didn't get that uh, Halloween until like later on. I found it used, so I didn't get that one right away. I had like the um, standard edition one first. In between these, this one went out of print and was one of those that was going for nutty money early on on eBay. Yes. I do remember that because I couldn't afford it at the time. It wasn't until much later that I picked this one up. I had... Exactly. Man, I don't know how many fucking Halloween releases they had. I know they had well, one before this. Yeah, they, they had uh, that one, the one before it, this one, that one. Um, and they had like they a had 25th like that, anniversary one. Yeah. Right. Then they had um, some other one that was like a. There was like two that came out around the same time. Like I think, um, I forget. We we talked about it on our show, so go check that out, everybody. Yeah, we did a uh, history of Halloween on DVD, which was ridiculous. By the way, how many damn <laughs> different versions of that show went on for four fucking days? <laughs> I think we were we were talking about this, Garrett, though, and I didn't bring my version here, but I so. They included, and I'm not sure what the deal is with this, but Anchor Bay would always include like chapter cards. So yep. they included a, a separate chapter card for both versions of the movie. Let's see here. Uh, the TV cut and the theatrical cut. And I mentioned this to you because this is a postcard that Anchor Bay did um, of a picture of Nick Castle holding the. Was the that Kirk was that mask. in there? Yeah, it's got Anchor Bay, the logo, oh, and everything. Dude, no, I'll be right back. I'm going to go see if mine's got that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to kill you now. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be complete. <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, you could. This was, like, highly sought after, though, for a long time from for me. Because, I won't, I mean, I've always loved the Halloween movies anyway. But Oh, uh, fuck it. Don't have it. He's going to be on eBay. Hey, get that. <laughs> Where's that damn postcard? <laughs> yes. It says it's not in here, man. I got the chapter card. <laughs> he says his will have a picture of Tony Moran in it. <laughs> oh, that's the that's the double death right there. <laughs> so yeah, you, got, you got Nick Castle, I got Moran. Yeah. <laughs> the horror man says that they had different postcards, maybe four in total. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. Oh, man. I don't know why, but I didn't find any version of Halloween on DVD. I know I've got a version of that on DVD, but I didn't find it out there. Yeah, from what I can recall, I know that there was just a basic version that came out like in 97, maybe 98. And then they did the special edition with features and all that stuff, which I think the features on those were all ported over from a Criterion Laserdisc. I don't know if there was anything that there may have been a new documentary on it or something like that. I remember uh I was thinking like the the two releases that were probably like the most memorable to me and for some reason I could not find the first one. I've got the second one. It's in there in the other room. I'll have to go get it. But were from shows that we went to because Anchor Bay would a lot of times they would after they dropped like a new release they would go to these conventions 
and they would promote it there and they would have like the posters and like these these little mini books and things that went along with them and the first one i think was uh 2004 horrifying which was the day of the dead release is that right well they had a couple around that time they had dawn of the dead was getting ready to come out the ultimate edition. that the ultimate edition yeah and they had uh Day of the Dead may have already come out. I know Hills Have Eyes was another one that was... The, the second one I was going to say was The Hills Have Eyes because that one I got signed by Michael Berryman, the the thing that came at, at the convention, which was like a little mini poster or whatever that they gave you when you went up to their booth. But those two, I don't have the, the Day of the Dead one. You know what I'm talking about, though? Like the Yeah, it's like, it, a, like a flip or whatever. Like yeah. Like a folder yeah. top deal. It opens up and it's got like the doctor's notes and things like that from... Um, oh no! Yada yada yada. I have that edition. There better be a doctor's notes in there. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, failed to fucking check. Oh, he did. Yeah. Notes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's gonna go check. It's like I know it's in there, Gary. It's a little pad that's got like a you know all written out handwritten notes. And yeah, it's like you were saying, we were talking to Felcher about that because that's one of the releases that he actually did. All the extras and stuff. Felcher wasn't he? He was at Horror Find 04. I, yeah. I remember That's him one there. of the first times, yeah, that we ever met yeah. him or saw him anyway. Because, like, he was sitting at the table and they had a bunch of shit about Hills Have Eyes at the table. And I can remember, I mean, I didn't know who he was, but I remember him looking back at it. You know, dude. He's almost like. There it is. There yep. Thank Sli- you. Sleepy is almost like. You can look at convention pictures. It's almost like playing Where's Waldo. It is, man. Like, he's at every fucking convention that was, like, big at that time. Yeah, if there's a background, you know, with a bunch of people in it, I guarantee you you'll see Slippy there with a wine shirt sitting around talking to somebody or whatever. Uh, but hold on a second. I'm going to go get, I'm going to pull one of his moves and go get my, right. get the Hills Have Eyes one real quick. Oh, I was just going to, that's what I was going to show, damn it. All right, oh, guys. well, shit, we'll just show that one then, yeah. All right, so uh, that was actually my next pick, but now that you guys were kind of already talking about it, um, fucking here. for my uh, recollection, was this like the first release of this? Because I can remember being super excited for yep. this ad- release, and I had this on VHS, but that's it. I only had it on VHS, and when this came out, I remember my uncle and I were just like over the moon for this edition. Now, this was it, though. Was this the first time it hit DVD or yes. Anchor yeah. Bay or whatever? Yeah. I had um, a uh, VHS of it at the time, and I was like, I was excited as hell for that release in particular. Yeah, that's why I had this here, because I can just remember the hype that we had uh, for this two-disc. It was a special edition. It ha- comes with a book. Um, I'm trying to see what the date was that this came out. Oh, three. So, I mean, they Hills Have Eyes, it kind of took a little while for them to kind of get up on this, but... Um, yeah, that, that to me is a, is a great, great addition. At the time, it was just mind-blowing. I don't know what it is, but it seems like a lot of people nowadays kind of shit on that movie. They, some of them why. say they, they prefer the remake. No. Like, what in the fuck kind of world are, are we living in right no. now? <laughs> no. You know, that's prefer the remake? remake? Who the fuck? <laughs> what? They like that they, guy in the I don't get, I mean... Uh, I don't. That's one thing that I just don't understand. I mean, I've, I've never confronted these people in particular. Confronted them. <laughs> confronted them. I them. I'm gonna beat the shit. Are we, <laughs> are we watching the same movie? <laughs> right. The hill. <laughs> you should go to Mike, Michael Berryman's table at a convention to stand there like this and just confront people when they come up. And be like, do you like this better than? Well, it's movie? like uh, you know, just comparing <laughs> Pluto's the Michael Berryman, right? <laughs> You can look at him. There is something physically wrong with him. You can right. you can tell. Yeah. yeah. Fast I mean, forward he was to, made for that role. Right. Who was it? Michael Bailey Smith or one of those yeah. fucking big stunt stunt guys. Just plop a bunch of play doh and shit all over his head. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I mean, it takes me completely. That's the thing. The, I mean, the mutants themselves took me completely out of it. Yeah, they, I'm not they say it was a bad remake. I just don't think it compares. Um, I actually thought it was decent, but I mean, I don't. I don't look at it as a comparison at all. Like it's just, no. it's very different to me. It's like mutants versus like just these these savages, you know, inbreds from up in the mountains. Like it's just to me, I just look at it very different as I did the other one. 
Yeah, I mean, the the look of the mutants in the remake is almost like the Elephant Man. Like, there's way too much shit and prosthetics on them and right. stuff. Like, they just look way too goofy. But the original, it's like that... You could tell the, the actors are much better in it, for one thing. And, like, you could tell that it was just, like, made in, for real in some desert somewhere. And they just, like, tortured these poor fucking people for weeks to make this film. All right, Jim Lawson, this is for you. <laughs> Give it to it, fucker! Give it! Give it! Give it! Twenty dollars! Give it twenty dollars or I'm gonna cut you! Appreciate it, brother. But anyway, that version that you, that you just showed, um, they had like all these posters and stuff made up for it at one of the conventions that we went to, and I got one of them signed by Barryman. And it's hanging around somewhere in one of these rooms. But, yeah, that's like one of my favorite. I don't know what it is about that, the look of that DVD, but it's one of my favorite It's also covers got a too. kind of um, like lenticular type yeah. of shininess to it, too. It's not like a standard. Yeah, it's, it's like it's almost it's a metallic look. Yeah, metallic. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a two-disc set, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. 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 So and like, it comes with a poster, actually. I wonder if it's the one that – oh, no, it's a book. Sorry. Yeah, there was there was so many too that was on my backup list. Like that one as well, the Day of the Dead one, which I think was the only one that they had that that packaging like that, which was mm-hmm. kind of like a a digi book style package, which is all. I mean, it's just a beautiful set and how they how they mm-hmm. put that together. And did Anchor Bay? I'm not thinking they had anything else like that exactly. You know, the embossed. Cut. No, the way remember it came with like a little base, and you pulled it out, and then it set back down in the th- like it was weird the way that it was packaged too, like it was, you know, like it came apart and there's two different pieces, and then like a little part of it was like a stand almost, and like you put it back down in there, and it, yeah, it was embossed. I don't think I ever saw another one done like that. I don't think they did another one like that. So, I wish I could have found that too because that would have been an interesting one to show. Um, I picked one out here that's kind of random. It's not really the movie itself because I like the movie. It's okay, you know. It's I don't think it ever came out again here in the United States. Oddly enough, if if it did, I don't. I didn't hear about it. But this was a moment in time where I knew Uncle Bill and myself had made it because this was the very first screener that we received from Anchor Bay Entertainment back in the day. Cemetery Man, right? De la Morte, De la Morte. And this is uh, one of the very last ones that had the classic, you know, Anchor Bay logo and all that. So we Mm -hmm. got in right at the tail end of that. And this is one that people had requested for, I mean, people were going nuts over this for years Mm -hmm. uh, to come out because... And I think still to this day, there's some sort of rights issue with it here in the United States where it hasn't, I don't think it's come back out, has it, here? I think it came out overseas. Not under that title, it hasn't. Um, and I think that's actually worth a little bit of money now because of that. I think that that edition is actually something that's uh, kind of sought after for, for a DVD now. Yeah, this one was 90, or no, wait. Yeah, 93 is the movie, and the release, I'm thinking, was... 2000 yeah 2006 so wow. this was um god yeah, this, this fucked up wow a long fucking time ago 15 years yeah, ago man, huh huh yeah that is crazy to think i've about got greg caldwell says the anchor bay dvd of possession is worth a lot of money i've still got that that's a huge piece of shit too with sam neal in it but i've still got it you remember that we watched it one night i got it on a double pack i think it was oh god oh yeah. But you know what? That's a weird ass movie, man. Like I wouldn't like as far as it being terrible. Like it was just, it's just messed up. Like it is kind of shitty. Like it's not like super entertaining, but just some of the stuff in it, you're like, what the hell is this person thinking? It's just, yeah, it's just too long though. If I remember, it's like over two hours long. But it reminded me of Society. It's kind of the vibe it that it has. Yeah, it, yeah. I but have anyway. that, but it's on like um. I have that. Remember they used to do like the double packs, like the double feature Anchor Bay would put out every once in a while. It had like the the movie thing at the on the top. It would say the two titles and 
Um, that's all I have that one. I don't know what it's what it's filled with, but um, there was a um. I was just checking this too. There's like a little booklet with, you know, history of the movie and all that. And guess who wrote it? Slippy. Slippy the dippy the doo, baby. I don't know if you can see it, but <laughs> yeah. The man's everywhere. He's been everywhere, man. But yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of, of Cemetery Man, but this is kind of an Anchor Bay Memories show too. So, oh yeah, definitely, of definitely <clears throat> one of the the big moments for for us on the show. We we had hit it when because at the time <laughs> we were receiving all kinds of bullshit from SRS Cinema. I don't, I shouldn't name names. There, I think they're still around. Trauma. <laughs> they're gonna be like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> Like a lot of labels that that weren't really producing stuff that we were interested in seeing. So when we finally got the contact, our good buddy Ed Peters from back in the day, you remember him, Uncle Bill, hooked yep. us up with uh, a lot of Anchor Bay stuff after that point. That's so weird, though, man. And, like, so many great titles came uh, from those screeners, too. And then, like, uh, from Anchor Bay and then Blue Underground and then, you know, all those other companies kind of followed, too, but... We still reviewed a lot of shit, man, from some pretty terrible, like, companies. Yeah, we got, like, a couple of good companies, but my God, I think we, yeah, we. Yeah, for, for every Night of the Demons, there were about four tooth fairies. <laughs> That's right. Uh. Uh, I have a pretty cool one next, actually. Um, this uh, this was one that people were sought after for a while, and it was, uh, you know, it was always being talked about. And uh, that is the Ooh. Sleepaway Camp Red Cross box set. That was the one that they took off the shelves because I guess they got sued by Red Cross or whatever. That's, yeah, probably one of the more infamous uh, releases they ever had. And um, then they came out with, like, the same thing, but they took the Red Cross off of it and, like, added some extra stuff or whatever. But this one also has that extra bonus DVD of the Survivor Sleepaway Camp 4. If a which bonus the other death. one didn't have. So, uh... Let me just make sure it's in here. <laughs> what it wouldn't? You bet. Like, <laughs> Fuck. So, so I have both of these editions actually, the both uh, white cases. But uh, this is the one that I know everybody um, remembers and talks about because this was hard to get, and um, I was lucky I grabbed it early because it it went out of print shortly after, and then it became almost like um, like a, a grail for a lot of people. So still, I want to talk about that on this. Money too. Is it? Because mm -hmm. Sleepaway Camp is, uh, you know, I like all of them, man. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of all three of them. And I and I know right now it's like probably this and the other white box and the and a Scream Factory is like Sleepaway Camp is pretty sought after with, from a lot of people at this point. I would love to talk to Pamela Springsteen. Like she's the, the I don't know, the great white whale, like the one that we'll <laughs> never get. But like I would – chase that interview forever just to hear what she says about those movies and she has to have she has to hate them like there's no because she's never talked about them she'll but, say uh she'll say i'll do the interview but i'm gonna have uh tony moran do it for me he'll tell you what i think of it <laughs> yeah. that would probably be more like i'll do the interview but the only thing i want to talk about is my fucking photography or something like that i don't know i'm gonna talk about those movies what i was thinking though too i mean i actually had this out as well which I kind of figured I'd have to do a backup for this. Ooh. But um, box sets, like a box set like this, how come, you know, the Screen Factory didn't do a box set? They just did them separately. Because they want you money. They want right. all of it. You want the limited edition poster for everything. The Scheme Factory's all about the money. <laughs> <laughs> but... Interesting story about that though. I had I found the the one with the bloody handprint at a Joseph Beth used and bought that one. And then Sleepy used to do these auctions, which I wish to God he would do now, but like without the guy that spends five thousand dollars on everything he's got. <laughs> and, but when back when he used to do them on our show, like it was pretty easy to get stuff. And I he sold me the one with the red cross that was signed by Felissa Rose. I've still got that one in storage. Somewhere. That's a beautiful yeah. set. I love that set. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we should uh, display that up up in this room with that uh, Necronomicon. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I think Uncle Bill, are you next or me? I can't. Uncle oh, Bill I get. I, <laughs> go! I'm going, you son of a bitch. Well, the only ones that I got left, 
let's see. No, I've got a couple of these. I don't know if we were going to get to this or not, but I had this other tin, which is the Hellraiser tin. Ooh, I forgot about that one. I forgot about that one. Which Hellraiser is probably one of my favorite movie series, even though like I know most people hate them after part three. But I like pretty much all of the movies. But this one in particular, like I had to hunt this one down. You remember this one has two movies in it, I believe. It's got Hellraiser 1 and 2. Yeah. Hellbound, yeah. They yeah. did that a lot, Anchor Bay did, back in the day. Um, you remember they did the same thing with, well, it wasn't a 10, but they had a limited version of, uh, I should have brought that out. That was actually one of my favorites, too, the house yeah. movies. They just oh, yeah. House 2 in. Yeah, with it. Yeah. So there's that one, and then the only other one I had... I didn't even know I had this because I thought the only version of Day of the Dead I had was the one we were just talking about. But this is like a 2004 version, which is just the regular standard edition Man, Day that of the might Dead. Have came, did that come before this thing? It might have. It's Divamax. Uh, oh, yeah. No, this was 2003. So there you go. They released this every year for a couple years. I'm sure after that, too. You mentioned Hellraiser. I think this may have been after they moved over to the blue label because it was, was Blu-ray. Yep. Um, but I had it sitting here, and I was like, this is a pretty killer. They never do shit like this anymore. Uh, and I think I got this one from Slippy as well. It oh, is yeah. the puzzle box, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. that you can take it out, and it has... I think it's the first two movies on Blu-ray, and then there's a bonus. Bonus death, baby. <laughs> it's uh, bonus. But yeah. never see anything like that anymore, unfortunately. I don't know nope. why that Again, is. Being, being clever, man. But yeah, I mean, it's a, you can take it up. I mean, how cool is that? Sorry. I just busted something over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wouldn't it be awful you busted that all the fuck? Well, fuck. That's it. Well, uh, Another example. I keep these on my on my desk. This was in the UK though, but this was Anchor Bay. I don't want to break it. I've got the yeah. I've it's got, got that all one. Four of the movies at the time. The uh, one that I'm you're holding up. Here. The one you're holding up, Garrett, is in my living room right now. I was like, he's going to bring that out. So fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't know. It's amazing. This is what like this was the first thing I had ever bought. From the UK in my whole life was that set. It was something that I had heard about and something that I was like, I need to own this because you couldn't get all the Phantasm movies in the US for a long period of time. <laughs> and uh, um, so I bought that and I actually bought a Region 2 player for the first time just to watch this thing. And man, what an amazing set this was. And I, I made sure that I kept this thing. Um, you know, people have tried to replicate it, but at the time, this was just so. It was something you never saw before. It was like mind blowing to get that yeah, sphere in there. So we're talking um, what what year is that? Like two thousand seven or so? I don't even know if it's that. Far. I bought a region free DVD player just is, for that set. Th yeah, that me too. This is two thousand five. Holy shit! Yeah. So I mean, yeah, that God, man, a, that's like that's when we started the show. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. and that so. was a that was something that um, I don't know if it was hard to get, but I think it got hard to, harder to get you know, after it was released. And that was like a grail for me for quite a while, you know, still living in my parents and having that thing. And I was like, sweet. It came from the United, you know, United Kingdom. And, you know, it was just, it was great. Good times. Um, one last one that I had on here, and I don't know if you guys have anything left, but yeah, we've, as far as the, some of my, our favorites, I think we've covered everything except one. I can't believe it that nobody brought this out yet. Which you brought the movie out earlier, Uncle Bill, but this is the ultimate oh. edition of Dawn of the Dead. That's another one where we were at the show when they released that. We were at a convention. I don't remember if it was 2005 or 2006. It was 2004. It was Horror Fine 2004 because th okay. this one had not come out yet. And some people from Anchor Bay were dropping them off. To, I think Ken Forey had one and Scott Reiniger had one at their table. And we were like, holy shit, that's not even out yet. How in the fuck? And we're, people were trying to buy it off of Ken Forey. And I'm surprised he didn't sell it to him. <laughs> Me too. Um, yeah. But still to this day, 
as far as uh, features and you know just three different cuts of the movie and here in the United States it's still the ultimate edition to own you know you may get a blu-ray it's got better picture quality on it and everything but as far as you know just the go-to edition of Dawn of the Dead this is still it what well, it's what about uh, 17 years later I remember getting that because she, I mean it's my favorite movie not just my favorite horror movie, but my favorite movie. And also, like, the editions of it before that were incredibly hard to fucking find. Mm-hmm. But I remember getting that and just marking the fuck out. Because when you open it up, it's got the picture. Yeah, it's got the yeah. pictures. Like, Sick. it's just the packaging and the artwork is fucking outstanding on that. Yeah. And you discs, had the I mean, European cut, I think. The theatrical cut. Like, the director's cut. Like, it had all the different cuts in one which, by the way, it's, the European cut ain't worth a fuck, but, I mean... Then you had the, 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 documentary, the documentary was in there, so you, it was four-disc fold-out. I mean, that was yeah. unheard of. The and, artwork um, as well, though. I mean, we have to touch on that because our buddies at Scheme Factory need to look back. Look at how simple that is, but it's fucking, like, great. It's classy. You know, I mean, you don't see shit like this anymore, and that's unfortunate. I don't know why it is. Our buddies at Scheme Factory would be the only ones that would probably be able to do it. They sell the most copies of everything. But, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they need to look back and take a page from our good pals at uh, Anchor Bay Entertainment. And, uh, you know, had you released those 4Ks in a set like this, the Halloween 4Ks, box like this, just a regular, you know, basic logo, you don't have to have, you know, Leaves blowing. I don't. I don't want to. It's got listen. It's got to have a vinyl in there, and a fucking keychain, and fifteen enamel pins, the limited, an old boot, a soup can, <laughs> whatever the fuck they think to put in there. It's all limited too. Limited. <laughs> yeah, it was. That one was another edition that was just so mind blowing at the time. It was just something we we've, we've never seen before and. What's crazy is I can't even remember. I think it was even FYE. Uh, There must have just been so many of these produced because I can remember paying a certain amount for it. And then all of a sudden seeing this thing like for like, you know, $10 at like FYE, like around Halloween or something. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, um, I don't know. I don't know if it was something that there was just so many copies of. But when I first bought mine, I think it was relatively expensive. It was. TJ's got an interesting question on here. Why did the Dawn of the Dead cast do a commentary on the shortest movie version? I'm guessing he's asking because it was the theatrical version. I would say simply because the theatrical version is by far the best version of the movie. And they're only going to do one commentary. So Yeah, it's probably the one that I mean most people would know. They're not going to do like a commentary over the European where they took all the comedy and shit out of it, which I never yeah. understood that, like that version of the film. But anyway, people just don't realize, though, like how much more fun collecting shit was back then because, like, those things came out that would never been out before. Like, you've never seen the movie like that. You never had those kind of features. Now you got 15 different versions of Dawn of the Dead and you've got uh, 30 versions of Evil Dead. And But back the, this time period that we're talking about, like, everything was new and it was like a big ordeal to get all this stuff. It's Dawn great. of the Dead was impossible to find on DVD. I mean, they'd released it yeah. before, but it was out of print, and it was going for big money on eBay. Yep. So it wasn't easy to find. Um, but, yeah. But somebody asked, and I was curious, did anybody think to grab... Uh, I have some of them out there in the tote somewhere, but... Somebody was talking about the the six pack sets of films that had like the beer that looked like beer. Did um, anybody have any of those? I remember them, but I don't. I remember them, but I I don't have any of those. Yeah, I think I had most of those movies separately, so I never yeah. did pick the the six pack up. Now, if I ever come across that at a Goodwill or something like that, mm-hmm. I'm definitely buying it. Agree. But uh, wasn't there one that had like uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? And like they were like horror comedies, and then there was one that had like Hell of Living Dead in it, and a couple other zombie Rats, movies. I think was in it. Yeah, Rats, yeah. What we should do is we should do a um, a follow up video of all the Anchor Bay we bought from this show until <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> we just see. It is inspiring though to go like try to find a bunch of those things that you I'm don't have. You, I'm, I'm already think my my I'm already churning in my head right now. Well, hey man, as of right now, you can get good deals on a lot of this stuff. Right. That's what I was thinking. That. There's you some create, of it that's create that the hype for, and then that's it. Yeah, and there's some movies like we were saying too that that have never ever. I know uh, Fade to Black was worth quite a bit of money before Vinegar Syndrome brought that out last year. Cheerleader yeah. Camp has never come back out. Cheerleader That's camp, another um, weird one. I was looking at mine today. Like Pin is another one that like is not out. That was another one that was kind of hard to find. Um, yeah, Cheerleader Camp. I'm trying to think if there's any more. Um, but yeah, there, there was a couple in there that they still haven't touched upon that were that were pretty cool. Nightmare was uh, yep. another one that was really valuable too for a long time. It it did come back out though. I'm thinking on on. Some company released it. There's some variants of stuff too. Like Garrett and I were talking about the. There was a Phantasm release that mm-hmm. came out. Um, that I think you were saying it was Circuit City Stores had one in every seven uh, autographed by Don Coscarelli, a poster autographed in the inside. So occasionally you'll see the. Uh, the additions on eBay with a sticker that says one in seven signed by Coscarelli. I've never seen one that includes the autograph poster though. Huh? You know what? That would be a good saved search because again, you're looking at a pretty rare piece. You know what I mean? So that's, but I'm just again, interested that kind of in stuff seeing what it would go me, for, like, you know? Yeah. I mean, it intrigues me to have something like that, which is, something you wanted so bad back then, but, you know, we didn't have, you know, the sources to get it, you know, like we do now in the sense where it's older, people are probably trying to dump them. They're not, they're not as excited about it as they once were. Um, you know, so, so the, the, as of right now, it could be easy to get some of this stuff. Um, but I do have a couple things left. I don't know if uh, UB has anything over there. No, I'm but fresh out of shit. Here thinking, um, thinking you guys want to talk about some of this stuff so i brought extras but another cool addition to me which was actually again was my introduction to this movie i didn't own it on vhs i'd never seen it and um my friend's dad had this edition and when i saw it it kind of blew me away so i had to go get it myself was this wicker man in this like wooden case similar to this to the tins but it was wood um and th- that was my first introduction to The Wicker Man, which at the time I, I loved it. Um, I still think it's a great movie. Um, it comes with different versions of the movie as well. But I think what really drew me to it was that it came in this this wooden case. So I don't know if you guys had this or have it. And remember this one? I do. I remember that. I do not have it, though. Like No, I don't have that one either. I think they did a updated version in the standard case, and I've got yes, that. Yes, they did. Yeah. It has a slip cover on it. Uh, it may have been a couple years later. I'm not really sure, but yeah, that's that's a really cool addition, almost like a cigar box or something. Yeah, <laughs> which yep. may be how they got those made. Honestly, yeah, this is always one of those ones that, um, and it's kind of almost burned in there, the logo and stuff. It's it's really cool. It's just again, just shows that how different Anchor Bay was and what the stuff that they were doing back then. Yeah, it's like you would you you don't even see shit like that now. Like nobody does no. anything like that. No. Nope. And if they did, I mean, it would be ungodly amounts of money probably to get it. Yeah. Well, Waxwork Records yeah. did for that Rob right. Zombie. It's like three hundred dollars or whatever. Three hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. that fuck it! Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> Limited edition box. Yeah. <laughs> All that shit. It's only three hundred dollars. Fuck. It sold out too within like twenty minutes or something. Yeah. You should, you, know you should do. You should. You should buy the regular, the regular vinyl, and uh, then like build a little box and put it inside and post the picture. <laughs> like I build a little wooden box, <laughs> put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, the, the Wicker Man one was one that I always kind of wanted to get, but yeah, I never did get that one. Well, well somebody you know said you can get it. You can get it on eBay for reasonable price, is what somebody says. So. Oh, I'm so yeah, I would grab it. It's but, time. Yeah, it's time now. But I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, it's splintered a little bit over here. <laughs> <laughs> you will have to upgrade. Don't fucking start. 
Um, <laughs> another one I have in here, which I brought out because uh, I had never even heard about this movie until this edition came out, and I saw it, and it had a slip cover, and I was like, wow, this movie looks pretty rad. And it, it's one of my favorite movies now, and it is... Class of 1984, which I surprisingly had never even heard of this movie until this edition came out. And when I saw the slipcover, that looked pretty badass. And then inside, you got this even cooler looking poster art. And man, I... Oh, it's even got reversible artwork in here. I didn't even realize that. So yeah, did, it's got... Did Screen reversible Factory artwork do that one recently? Not too <laughs> yeah, long they did. Yeah. That's coming up, but man, this is honestly... I haven't talked too much about it on my channel. I've been kind of waiting... Um, that's one of my favorites. And another movie that, um, I was introduced to through Anchor Bay, which I didn't bring out is Tough Turf. And both of those are like movies that I had seen for the first time on DVD through Anchor Bay that have become like top 10 movies for me, like ever. Like for some reason, it's just r exactly what I look for in a, in a movie and I uh, love it. So if you haven't seen Class of 1984, yes, Screen Factory did do a really nice Blu-ray with it, uh, with some cool artwork as well. So that movie, that movie gets slept on quite a bit, but it's it is a great movie. Roddy McDowell is great in it. It's like a movie mm -hmm. that you would never imagine him being in, but yeah, it's yeah, it's it's like one of those you know. There's plenty of movies like it, you know, like the the teacher versus the kids type of uh, scenario. Do, but do you remember? It's just super cool. Please tell me you remember uh, Class of 1999, which I don't know if they were trying to do like a sequel to that or if that's it, just a movie that's completely... It like, actually is a sequel, believe it or not, which it, it's but, very odd that it is because it doesn't really match at all. No, um, the teachers are fucking cyborgs in it. Like right. it has nothing to do with the original, but it's great. I mean, in its own way, it's horrible, but great, you know. I think yeah, I should send that you, one out, uh, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. I should send you, I actually just saw, it's funny you say that, um, another country just put out this box set, limited edition box set, with Class of 84, Class of 99, and then Class of 99 Part 2 or something like that. Oh, shit. And it, become, and it comes in this like big giant like box with like all this like postcards and crazy stuff. And it's funny because you do look at that and you're like, yeah, 84 just doesn't make a lot of sense inside that, in that world, you know? Yeah, no, those. <laughs> I've never seen Class of 99 too. I didn't even know it existed, but I can imagine what it's like. Yeah, it's probably no good. William Smith's in it, or, you know. It, it definitely seems like a Vinegar Syndrome type thing, is Class of, is 99 Part 2. Seems like it does. probably sneak out, yeah. Yeah. So, um,. Yeah, I guess that, as far as the releases go, if anybody has any questions or anything, I guess we can, we can I got, go through I got those. two more over here. Oh, you got two more? Okay. Sorry. Buddy. Well, well, I mean, well, so I have one more that everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah, that was awesome when it came out. And then I have one more that you guys are going to be like, you got to be shitting me. <laughs> Why did you take this out? All right, we know wait. this one. This We know this one. Right. Yeah, I've got This that was a too. killer, like, addition. And I don't think there's been one like this for this movie since. Um, what a great addition this is. Uh, again, it's like uh, you can take it out, fold it out. It's full of special features. Uh, never got its due justice. So hopefully the next edition that we are getting is going to uh, kind of port all these over and maybe some more. But um, Supposedly love that 4K, edition. Supposedly 4K, I think. Yeah. And it's got kind of that lenticular, that type of metallic cover, kind of similar to uh, Hills Have Eyes. And then the last one I took out, which, you know, it's not – I don't even know what to call it, but the fact that Anchor Bay would release something like this is still mind blowing to me. Um, being a kid of like the '90s, this show was a favorite of mine, especially for its Halloween episodes, and that is <laughs> <That's> so cute. <laughs> the Roseanne, all the Halloween specials from Anchor Bay. That exists. This. Like that's oh, fucking yeah, outstanding. Like, I've never seen that before. So I don't even know. I don't know if this thing is rare, uh, but it's Anchor it's got Bay it's got, got to be man. And it's got I've all never the even heard of that. episodes of Roseanne. So it's called Roseanne the Halloween Edition, and it's not a bootleg. It's not made up. It's legit. Um, but yeah, <laughs> track this down because man, their Halloween specials in that show were freaking killer, man, killer. They uh, were. You, you get all the Halloween editions and don't have to worry about the rest of the, the, the series. So I thought that was always there a was like, very there, unique and pretty cool thing. There was some odd stuff that Anchor Bay would release every once in a while. Not just horror stuff. 
either. I mean, they made a lot of their money off of fucking Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. We know that. Right. Um, and they did like other stuff like uh, Silk Stockings DVDs. And uh, I mean, there's just a bunch of random ones. Moon, moonlighting, I think. Was a, like they would do some weird stuff. Gallagher, you remember the guy that smashed the, you know, the yeah. watermelons up and stuff? It's weird random stuff too, so. That's, but um, yeah, it's it was it was definitely cool, kind of reminiscing and talking about this stuff for sure. And you know, there was so much more that we could have got into because there's plenty of those big steel books that I'm sure we have the steel cases. There's plenty of those thick cases that that we. Well, have. that's what I was thinking. Like, we need to do a part two because I pulled out some shit from the era, like after the really good era. And right. it, was, it was stuff like the disappearance of Alice Creed. And shit like that. I've got a ton of that stuff because we used to get screeners of it. We need to do a part two, like the downfall, yeah, like the rise and fall of Anchor Bay, you know? Yeah, I yeah. feel like even when it had like that that little logo, but then it turned blue, like there was yep. still some good stuff that came out. But then when they went to that like weird A or whatever, like that, it was like a weird design. It's like that's when things were like. That's when stars were all come over into the place. play. Yeah. yeah. And the, the the sad thing is, is and we were talking to Don May about this, and he seemed like he was happy that they died, you know, that Anchor Bay died. But it, they they kind of just silently died like three or four You're years right. ago. I don't think he was happy about it, but he, I think he definitely saw it coming because, like, he, like they were saying, like they were spending way too much money on releases and things like that. Card well, of the Give it to it. Give it. <laughs> there you go. In there, Garrett. Anchor Bay version of Possession Zero. Yeah, I, I only have that Anchor Bay version of that. I did watch it on like Tubi or something like that. I don't know what version it was, though. Look yeah, here, buddy. He's... You need to get on your computer right now and get the Mondo version of that fucking film. Say it. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's the U.S. cut, which is incomprehensible garbage. So, if we if we buy it, or if I buy it, Carded or Dention, and if the you know the European cut isn't any better, <laughs> you're gonna give me my money back. That, the U.S. cut or whatever the fuck that was, that was awful. I can still remember that to this day. I watched that movie once. Once was enough for me. It's it's messed up, man. It's a definitely with the version that I remember. Again, I I have the DVD, but I recently watched it not too long ago on on like streaming somewhere. I must have been like Tubi, and I was like, oh my god, like do I? I, I forgot I even owned it. I was like, this was a mess. Like it was just so messed up. And uh, yeah, I did have that like double feature. But it's funny, someone someone said that the Roseanne DVD is out of print. Yeah, uh, the it's twenty or seven or one fifty five. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty wide price range. You'd, you'd have to be, yeah, to pay the one fifty five. You'd have to be God like damn. the biggest Roseanne fan alive, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. There is some some good stuff. And now, a question that I have for you guys: Is there anything that none of us talked about that you do not own that you've always kind of wanted, and maybe you have it already, like on a Blu-ray or something? But you're always we're like, ah, you know, I never could find that Anchor Bay version hmm. I know one that pops immediately into my mind because it's the one movie that I have looked for in probably a hundred pawn shops and goodwill stores over the years the midnight hour yeah that's the ultimate anchor bay disc uh. yeah you're right I don't own it either it was one of those ones I always tried to find every time you went to a used store you're like yeah man they might have it and Never any luck. I don't know the situation with that thing. It just like came and went. I don't know. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I've got oh it right. Oh my god! Here. No, I'm just kidding. I, don't... <laughs> oh. I was just thinking. I know. Wouldn't that be killer? If yeah. I just pulled it out, nobody has that shit. It's impossible. Not, you've got it in like a ca- like a like a nice case. Like <laughs> it's graded. It's like a ten. Yeah. No. Sorry. That's so funny. Um, Never you know, even seen it. That I always wanted was that, uh, man, I have multiple versions of this. They re-released it, which is, you know, if we do a part two, it's definitely going to be one that I was going to pull out. But um, 
the original, I think it was Silent Night, Deadly Night. I think it might have been like part one and two they did. And then it went way out of print. And then they like re-released it a bunch of different times. And they re-released the Silent Night, Deadly Night like uncut for the first time. That was a big deal. But yeah. it was that original run from this old Anchor Bay like with this label on it that I had never was able to find. Except the, um, the one with one and two both? Yes, but they did yeah. that. They re-released that way later, but it was yeah, it was the original one with one and two both. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Uncle Bill has that. I, I you did have it at one time. I still have it. It's signed yeah. by uh, old Chuck too. Um, and it's the uh, one back- with this old logo like this because that's that's a, that was a hard one to find, man. I I always like ne- I, it was always one I wanted, but never found it. Yeah, back in the day, like when we were doing the horror graphs thing, I had that. I sent him the. Um, the insert cover, and he sent me back, get this shit, he sent me back that signed and the big box VHS of Silent Night, Deadly Night signed. I forget wow. who put that out. Like, I have to go look, but yeah. He was, he was a cool guy, yeah. I think we we still had his contact info and got him on the show like a year later or whatever it was from that, too. So. Yeah, bring that to the table next time, man. I'd love to see that. I will. Well, you know, we'll probably do some sort of holiday horror collection type deal later on. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, we need to do it to part two of this. There's too much shit. Like, there's a ton of stuff out there that I could still get that we could talk about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we will. Like, like I said, we these sort of shows, people seem to really enjoy them. And if you do like it, give us thumbs up. That evidently helps, I've heard. Thumbs up the video. <laughs> up your butt. Oh, right up, up go Because, like, evidently that's how the alg- algorithm works a little bit. The more videos it gets, the more thumbs. You know, I don't know. Yeah, man. But, uh, yeah, if anybody has any other quick sort of thing, I mean, we'll mention it on here. But, yeah, we've been on here almost two hours. And we did do a multicast. We're out also on uh, Garrett's channel, Born to be Rad which uh, you'll definitely want to check that out and subscribe uh, to his stuff, right? You always do another stuff on there, different sort of things like... Uh, yeah, I have a... Uh, ate, <laughs> ate some pizza from the 1990s, kind of. I did. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, sort of. Uh, pizza challenge we did the other day with my brother and his wife. Um, I am going to be uploading tomorrow or the next day is the my July haul. It's already done. I've been editing it. The damn thing is 40 minutes long for a freaking Ooh. monthly haul. It's craziness. Yeah, too I, many I, sales, man. It's too I many need sales. to record some of that shit, too. And I, I get depressed <laughs> every fucking... Hang on a second. I'll give you a preview because I've got them stacked up over here. Oh, God. Buddy, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I'm like, it was, that's kind of how big mine was too. It took, my review is 40 minutes for the haul that I got in July. It's insane. Like I was just looking at it. I'm like, cause every day there was a sale here and a sale there. And then I think he even messaged us and he said like, somebody else with Synapse is having a sale and Deep Discount was having a sale. I'm like, I can't do anymore. Like I'm done. Yeah. A lot of stuff, man. So we got a couple questions. Oh, fuck, man. I forgot about that one. I'd say we all probably have that too. The reanimator. Syringe set. The animator syringe set. Yeah, we'll that maybe was talk in about my that pile. next. Yeah, that next was in time. my pile, and that's why I shot you guys that text about the the logos because I knew that was like kind of on that like second run of uh, when they re released the Silent Night, Deadly Night, all that stuff. They kind of had that resurgence. So, yeah, that was uh, that's a good set for sure. Eric Hansen, <laughs> when are you going to sing the classic Dead Pit song? What the fuck? Finger fuck yourself tonight. I don't know if you guys can sing it. <laughs> that's on the, the Patreon page, right? Did we add that on there or it's it's coming on there if not because I, I don't think that it. one's I don't think that's on there, is it? I think go fuck Everybody yourself's on there. You will go fuck yourself, yeah. fuck yourself and no one else. There you go. Wow, wait a minute. So Greg Caldwell says Black Christmas with the set of cards. I don't think I own that. The only Black Christmas I think I have was like it was like a white DVD, and I don't think it was Anchor Bay to be honest. I don't think I like I've Christmas. ever seen an Anchor Bay Black Christmas set. I'm going on eBay tonight. See what Somebody we can find. keeps wanting to know when the ticks uh, 
Blu-ray's coming out. I it ain't never coming on, out. It ain't coming out. I have ticks on Blu-ray. I have ticks on Blu-ray. It's oh, out of print, on. but... You know, it is? Yeah. It's going for decent money. It, how about ticks it, on VHS? I have that, too. Is that how about ticks, on? ticks on 4K? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want ticks the, on VHS? The Fingerfuck song debuted on the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, Dead Pit on the Road. That's a trivia question. So, um, <laughs> God damn. Ticks, yeah, the, all the films release ticks. That's where I, yeah, that's the one that I've got. Yeah. So I don't know how much it's worth. I know it's out of print and it's worth a, huh. you know, worth a little bit. So Yeah, I have that one too. Actually, I'm looking over here. Now, is Black Christmas with the cards, is that a Blu-ray? Um, because I have a Blu-ray of Black Christmas that is not a Screen Factory Blu-ray. It was one that I had had, and I never got rid of it. it. Had like a red case. I think I thought it was Lionsgate. Maybe it's Anchor Bay. And if that's the one, I do own that. Um, I haven't got rid of it yet, but it's been in my pile of things that I was like, oh, maybe I'll get rid of this because I already have the Blu-ray on Screen Factory. But if that's a good one, then I'm just gonna keep it. I don't know. Is it a Blu-ray that we're talking about, or is it a DVD of Black Christmas with the cards? Because I do have a Blu-ray. That I don't remember who it's from. It could be Anchor Bay. He said that his is a DVD version, but it may have a Blu-ray as well. Hmm. I'll have to check that yeah, out. There's, there's a lot of one-off horror movies, too. Just random stuff that Anchor Bay released back in the day. Like, independent stuff as well. Um, there's just so much stuff to talk about. So, yeah, we'll definitely have to do a part two at some point. I know we're also working on working through the Scream Factory ones as well. So I'm not sure if we'll get to year three this month or next month, but yeah, I mean, we'll let you guys know on that because that's a big one. We're preparing a little bit for that. There's going to be some fun shit in that. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to stay tuned for sure. Maybe like a new song. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they, just, they just said Evil Dead Anchor Bay lunchbox with DVD inside? Really? Why not? I don't, I don't, that was I don't I don't remember, that had that, to be very early if they did that because that's I don't pretty cool that. though, man. Huh? But um, yeah, the happy I mean, birthday to me release that came with a birthday cake. <laughs> Y'all remember that one? And came with a yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like making me like <laughs> you know, get my wheels. He's gonna be on fucking eBay, eBay later. <laughs> Garrett, yeah, Garrett's gonna, he's going to be adding Anchor Bay Entertainment to his I'm thinking uh, in my head, I'm like, I have Happy Birthday to me. I have freaking two editions. I don't think either of them are from Anchor Bay. But, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't need that one. So I guess that is it for the show. You guys have anything else you wanted to mention on here? Or? No, man. Just um, no. Just check out my next uh, July haul. Actually, I'm interested to see yours and see if we get a lot of the same stuff. We probably did. Greg Caldwell says, everyone in the chat, give a thumbs up for Anchor Bay. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, I mean, just they, want to thank... They really uh, started this whole trend, I think, of like what we have now. I think that they were really the, the forefront of, of what we see now. And I was saying this to my uncle last night, and I say this to you guys all the time. In a time when people thought in 2021 physical media would be completely dead... I don't know, man. I feel like if you're in it, like it's it's pretty heavy right now. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more popular now than it ever has been. If it wasn't for Anchor Bay, we wouldn't be spending five hundred dollars a month. On this shit. And like you were saying, I think it's a matter of time too before all of these releases are going to become collectible, much like a lot of the VHS stuff is now. Uh, I agree. So it would be a good time, you know. And I think I'm pretty sure Garrett he's going to be searching tonight on eBay to look for some deals. So, but yeah, now would be the time to uh, get into that sort of thing. Get, so, be ahead of the curve. If yeah, you know. so we're going to create the hype, which then would create the market, which would then, if everybody goes after this stuff and then starts posting it and promoting their stuff, like, then it becomes valuable. Like, that, that's how it works, you know? So, mm. everybody that that's listens to this now or in the future, be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to start posting, you know, Anchor Bay stuff on Instagram and hashtagging Anchor Bay, D Anchor Bay DVD, like, that's it. You start your own market. There you really. go. Yeah. <laughs> we, we reap the benefits. <laughs> so No, we don't because then we're going to be like, damn it, I can't get anything for a good price anymore. We should have no, kept we, our mouth shut. We, we just, have to, we we just have to buy it all up tonight. And then, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
when are we getting Freddy got fingered in 4K? It's probably coming. Somebody will come out with it. <laughs> That'll be one our buddy Justin Beam will be working on, you know, for Paramount or whatever. But uh, we appreciate everybody uh, coming and checking the show out tonight. If you enjoy this sort of thing, you can check out Garrett Born number two B E Rad over on YouTube. Give him a sub and a like and thumbs up and video response, whatever you do now on, you on YouTube. And uh, we do these sort of streams here like once a week or once every other week. So definitely, um, if you like this sort of thing, check us out on DeadPitOnPatreon.com, Daddy. We got thousands of hours of shit. It's ridiculous. We're only like like three years in. Three, no, four years <laughs> in. Eric, Eric, Eric Hansen says he's going to start posting all about Image <laughs> Entertainment to get the, the market drive up. Image Entertainment? I don't know if that'd be easy. <laughs> that'd be yeah, easy. Let's, get, let's, drive, let's drive up the Tartan Asia Extreme Market and just get that going. Because we'll have fucking million dollars if we do that. Oh, God. But yeah, um, check us out. DeadPitOnPatreon.com Appreciate you all again. We'll see you next time over at deadpit.com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Deadpit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only $1.